Hi, I'm Scott. It's Azure Friday. I'm here with Stefan, who works on Azure websites. Hi. So I've got uh, a bunch of sites in Azure, and Hansel Minutes is my podcast, and this is the most popular of my sites. You had said before that um, you know small kind of brochureware sites can run in shared. Exactly. Uh, this site actually does some database work, and um, it's a little bit more complicated. Of the sites that I have, it's the most most popular. So you can see that I've you know sometimes I get some errors because I've got some problems in my uh, in my code. So every once in a while something goes wrong. Uh, I've pretty much got constant activity yep. on the site, and. Every once in a while, someone will say, oh, the site's not responsive, and I'll go and I'll find out that someone's okay. decided to run a script and, and, and go hammer and, your and site. And hammer my site. And it's only on a small uh, VM. You know, what happens if I get on Hacker News or Slashdot or, Correct. or Reddit? Correct. And so that's, that's one of the critical um, you know, design points we wanted to make sure that was really great for Azure websites, which was first off, making it really easy manually to be able to scale up and scale down because again that's part of the whole point of running on platform as a service mm -hmm. if you know um, or even if by accident you suddenly have a very popular site you don't want to suddenly call up the phone to your server vendor and then spend three weeks getting a po filled out right to get hardware to go run instead you just come here and you can do one of two things you can first off at the very bottom there say look just put me on more virtual machines Right? And that's one way of instantly getting more cores, more memory. Mm -hmm. The other option, of course, is you can also move up to a larger size. Now, typically, um, you know, what, we, what we tend to see, what we tend to recommend is start out getting onto the right kind of size that you want on day one, mm -hmm. and then from there, either scale up or down the number of instances. So, in your case, right, if you suddenly got slash dotted, you could instantly sit there and say, great, go quick, give me four smalls. Okay. And within, you know, call it 30, 60 seconds, we'll spin up more VMs, and then we'll start bleeding traffic onto all of the additional virtual machines as they come up. And my existing site will still kind of try to stay up. And exactly. So what will happen is, of course, your, your one instance of the site running on one small, okay, yeah, it's getting hammered there. But again, once the, once the second virtual machine comes up, we immediately recognize that mm. and we'll start running traffic to it. Now, are you taking my one virtual machine and adding three? Or are you making four and moving me over from one to four? No, um, it's, it's the former, and that's actually the reason why it's, it's probably quote unquote better that when you're thinking about a, a scaling decision to just say increase the instance count because that way the active traffic, we don't have to do anything with trying to drain you off and then move you to a different virtual machine size. We mm -hmm. can absolutely do that, but it's a lot smoother just to say we're going to keep you running on an existing virtual machine and then we just add on more instances based upon what you've selected here on the slider. Okay, and this scale is completely manual in the sense of someone's going to call me and tell me. Correct. So that's this is the case where you have to know um, that something's going on, log in, and actually say, okay, now I'm going to go make a scaling decision. Now I know that I could say, uh, maybe schedule some times and say, uh, Fridays is really my busiest day. Right. So this is this is getting into the the whole general the auto scale feature, which is saying that you want to go out and have some basic rules mm -hmm. in which you tell us Windows Azure and you say either based upon some schedule or based upon some concrete metrics, when would you like us to either increase or decrease your capacity? So here you brought up the scheduling screen, so this is basically doing time-based um, scaling. Ah. And we're saying, okay, great, uh, you know, given various options or like what we always joke about the canonical 8 a.m. traffic rush, Monday Eastern Standard Time, when everyone starts getting into work for the new work week, you can say, okay, um, on some specific schedule or point in time, we'd like you to start giving me more capacity. And the other nice thing about that is you can also do that proactively. So if you have a good mm. understanding of your traffic, you mm -hmm. can set up a time-based schedule that ensures we've scaled you up ahead of time in advance of the traffic coming in. That would be really useful because if I'm a, I run a podcast, but it's a technical podcast, which means really I know for a fact, and I can show you the numbers, no one listens on weekends. So yep. I could totally lower my, my traffic yes. and presumably save money. Yes, yes. And also, I mean, for us, it's also good, right? We, as much as possible, we'd like... We'd like our customers to be running on loaded up servers. Mm -hmm. And if you're actually sitting there running idle, it's like, well, why not give those resources off and uh, you know, make them available to a different customer who, who actually has a more immediate need for them. 
Now I can also say scale by CPU, and then suddenly my little slider bar, which right here is very simple, there's your 10 instances, yep. uh, becomes really a lot more interesting. Yeah, so now what you're doing is you're basically, you're setting a band that has a minimum and a maximum, and you're saying that for example, here at the low end, I don't ever want to have less than three instances actually up and running, but based upon, in this case, the amount of CPU load that we see running on the existing instances, we can scale you up as far as a total of seven instances. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, that, of course, affects, affects billing. Yes, so ultimately behind the scenes, right, we are always counting the number of what we call CPU hours or core hours. And so that's why, for example, you can see at the top of the screen, we always tell you how many cores there are that are available for the different sizes of the virtual machines. So ultimately when you're saying, I want to run, you know, a minimum of three um, instances in standard mode, Billing wise, we're going to take that number three, we're going to multiply it by the number of CPU cores that are actually running, and then we're going to keep track of that hour by hour. And of course, at the end of the month, every 30 days or so, you will get the accrued number of how many total CPU hours you racked up that month. Okay. My last question is that I was told by a number of people in just generally cloud speaking, make that CPU work hard. I mean, you paid for it. Yeah, get it the, working. so totally agree with you. I think that's right for any of us as customers, whatever, like you buy a car, buy a house, right? I mean, you know, you paid for it, definitely go make it earn, uh, earn the money you, you laid down for it. One thing though to keep in mind is with websites, even though we're billing you sort of abstractly by CPU hours, I think we all know more often than not, usually it's things like memory mm -hmm. or potentially network egress, things like that, that end up being the bottleneck resources that you have to worry about as a developer. That is true. I've actually found that to be the case, that, that network uh, out is the number one thing. So, yep, there's network out. And then, again, I know at least for a lot of apps uh, I've worked on in the past, especially if you're really loading up the traffic, you have to worry about the amount of memory, sort of the steady state memory consumption that you're, that you're using up on any individual server. Cool. Uh, next, we'll talk about monitoring. It's Azure Fridays.